Hey friends, I am Roshni welcoming you again to my channel Circuit Globe. Today we will see what is signal and how we can classify a signal. So let's get started. Signals are defined as the single valued functions that shows change in physical quantities with respect to change in independent variables like space, time etc. When we talk about signal in electrical and electronics, then generally signal is regarded as a variation in electrical quantities like voltage or current with respect to time. In general, it is said that a signal carries information. Now the question arises, how can we say that? So to understand this, consider some real life examples. The first example is change in temperature with respect to time. If we consider a day in summer season, then we know that the temperature will be low in the morning, then rises with time and will be comparatively high in the afternoon. So this shows that the temperature is varying with time. So here the physical quantity is temperature and the independent variable is time. The change in temperature with time carries the information regarding the atmospheric condition. The second is talking to a person. So when we speak, the change in acoustic vibration with time results in speed signal and this helps in conveying the message to the person. The third is a pictorial representation or a still picture. It is formed by varying the brightness from one point to another. Thus represents a static picture that can be visualized by human eyes. The next one is video representation. So guys in a similar way, a video also shows the change in the graphics with respect to time, delivering some specific content. Hence we can say that the change in physical quantity relative to some variables represents some kind of information and this is known as signal. A function of a signal may depend on either one or two independent variables and this categorizes the signal as one dimensional and two dimensional respectively. Let's now proceed further to understand how a signal is represented. So guys suppose we have a string of number that is 8, 14, 12 and 4 showing share value of a particular stock on four consecutive days represented by this variable n that is 1, 2, 3 and 4. This string of number corresponds to a signal and each respective value is a function of n that is number of days. In the first day the value is 8, in the second day the value is 14, in the third day the value is 12 and in the fourth day the value is 4. So the representation of signal according to above given data will be given in this way. Here this y axis represents xn that is share value of a particular stock and this x axis represents n that is number of days. Here, this scale represents 1, 2, 3 and 4 and in the y-axis we can have 8, this is 14, this is 12 and this is 4. So just by viewing this value, we can have this plot. So by viewing this, you have got the idea of representing a signal with a set of discrete data which shows a specific information. Here, this is our tabular representation while this is our graphical representation of signal. Let's now proceed and see how signals are classified. So basically signals are of two types. The first type is continuous time signal while the second type is discrete time signal. Let's understand each type separately. So the first type is continuous time signal. A continuous time signal is the one which is defined continuously for each individual value of the independent variable that is time. The figure given here represents a signal whose function xt is varying continuously with the independent variable time. Here as we can see that for each individual value of time, we have different value of physical quantity xt. But it is not necessary that if a signal is not continuous at all points, then it is not a continuous time signal. I think it is quite confusing. So let's elaborate it. So basically consider a rectangular waveform shown here. This is also a continuous time signal. Now how can we say that? Here this rectangular waveform shows discontinuities at several points like here, 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 here and so on. But it also shows that here the value of the wave is defined at all points even at which discontinuities occur. Thus a continuous time signal is defined relative to its defining at all points irrespective of the discontinuities. As we can see here that although the value here is zero but it is defined for a specific time t. In this way it is called a continuous time signal. Let's now check for the second type that is discrete time signal. So a discrete time signal is defined as the type of signal which is discretely defined only for some specific set of points 
of the independent variable that is time. Consider the figure shown here. This figure clearly represents that the function xt is defined for some specific set of points in the time domain. Here this pin heads defines the sample values at different time instants. You must not conclude here that for the time being between two samples that is this time, the value of function xt is zero. It may be zero, but as samples are taken only at discrete time instants, thus we can't say this with surety that it is zero or not. Guys, due to this reason, it is different from continuous time signal, which shows discontinuities at some points, but that discontinuities is related to attaining a zero value. However, here in discrete time, there is no such information regarding whether the value is zero or not as the time instants are undefined. So friends, this is all for today. I hope this lesson has cleared your doubts. So please do like and share and put on your suggestions below in the comment section. Also do subscribe our channel to never miss any update from us. I'll be back with a new lesson. Till then, take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.